this video is all about triceps tendinosis, dealing with insertional tricep pain that goes on for a prolonged period of time. Generally, we're dealing with a tendinopathy where there's actually degeneration and breakdown of that tendon as it comes into the ulna and the olecranon processes on either side. We're gonna talk about that in this video and what we actually do that's a little different than what a lot of people are doing for triceps tendinosis and it's based on tissue healing time frames and based on progressing the athlete with not necessarily strengthening in mind but more so healing getting that tendon to be more healthy with progressive overload through a series of exercises and techniques we're going to show you those in this video make sure you stay tuned all the way through the end because at the end of the video we're actually going to go through some of our most effective techniques for triceps tendinosis. Let's talk briefly about the structures that we're dealing with here. We're dealing with the triceps tendon as it actually comes in to the ulna. The triceps means three triceps. Triceps brachii has three heads, but all of them actually insert into the elbow. So when they come down into the elbow, the tendon, the bulk of it is here, and then you actually have a bifurcation, a splitting. The splitting is like two fingers, one on either side of this bone here, one that actually dives under the inside of the elbow, one that kind of goes in the outside of the elbow. On the outside of the elbow, we also have an anconius, a small muscle here that you can kind of see on me, right there. And that also deals with extension of the elbow. It's a, a sister, it's very small, but we can sometimes get irritation of that anconius muscle when we're dealing with triceps tendinosis or tendinopathy. Tendinosis, when we think about it, is differentiated from tendinitis, which is a short-term condition. Tendinitis, four to six weeks. If it's not better in four to six weeks, or even sooner than that, you're not really dealing with a tendinitis anymore. What you're dealing with is a tendinopathy or a tendinosis. Tendinitis is an inflammatory condition. As you can see on the screen here, tendinitis actually is swelling of the tendon. There's uh, swelling of the sheath of the tendon, known as tenosynovitis, and then there's swelling of the tendon, irritation of the tendon. As that becomes more chronic, and that infl inflammatory process begins to break the tendon down a little bit, you have splitting and disorganization of the tendon fibers. In the tendon, fibers are supposed to be arranged in parallel. They're supposed to be tightly packed, they all run in one direction, and the reason for that is that tendons only resist pull from one direction, here to here, or in this case, here to here, it's running straight in one direction. They're tightly packed parallel fibers. When you have breakdown of the tendon and degeneration, you get what's known as a tendinopathy and a tendinosis. The fibers become disoriented and they're a little bit more out of whack. They're not as tightly packed and they're a little bit you know, laid in angles, things are off. So the tendon fibers are off, but also we start to get some fluid build up in the tendon. It becomes more puffy, and that's something we're dealing with all the time with the shoulder. When it comes to the tricep, you get these fibers that are no longer as strong as what they used to be. They're not as tightly packed as what they were before, and then you're dealing with fluid in that tendon. And this is differentiated from inflammation, where you're thinking of an inflammatory process. Tendinosis is not an inflammatory process. It's a chronic degenerative condition. So when we have that, what we're dealing with is trying to get that tendon as healthy as possible. When we're talking about tendinosis, we're talking about these long-term conditions. The majority of tendinosis, somewhere in the 80%, 78 to maybe 90% of cases will be resolved in nine to 12 months. That's nine to 12 months though. This isn't a one to two month recovery process. You might feel better in one to two months if you start doing the right things, but the tendon healing process is gonna take a longer period of time. And that's why I advise that you continually progress your exercise and stay consistent with it over that period of time. Here's an image of triceps tendinosis. This is an MRI. And what we're looking at is the tendon as it comes down into the back of the elbow here. You can see where the arrow's pointing. That's where the damage is or the degeneration is. And it should be a homogeneous color. It should all be a gray color coming into the elbow. And what you see is some heterogeneity. The tendon doesn't look 
as smooth as it should. It should be nice gray, and now you're starting to see that it's not like that anymore. There's a little bit of hyper intensity, and then there's a little bit of area, area that's a little hypo intense, where it's a little darker, a little lighter, and then you have your gray too. So that's what it'll look like on the MRI. Practically, however, it's that tendon where those fibers are a little bit off, they're not as lined up as well, and then you have fluid in the tendon. So what we do is we start with isometric loading, we pro progress to eccentric loading, and then we'll move into our more concentric to eccentric action. We'll talk about that here in a second as we go through this progression. If you're someone that's dealing with elbow pain that's only been around for a few weeks, check out our video on triceps tendonitis that we've done in the past. One of our favorite ways to load the triceps is actually on a wall. And the reason for this is we can progress it in many ways. As the feet move away from the wall, we're gonna have more load on the tricep. As the feet move closer to the wall, we have less load. If we do it with a straightened elbow position, we're hitting it when the muscle is actually shortened more. With the feet closer, we limit the loading, much less load here. As we bend the elbow, we can hit different areas of elbow flexion. The key with any of these areas areas or with any of these exercises we stay pain free. Take whatever you think you can do, whatever you think you can tolerate and cut it in half and that's where you're going to start for your exercise progression. So let's just say I can really tolerate activity in this range. I'm just going to start with an isometric here. I'll do sets of 10 seconds. If I get achy or sore during the exercise, after the exercise or later in the evening, I've overdone it. You're going to stay away from achiness and soreness as you do the exercise. So here, I'm gonna hold this position, 10 seconds, and I'm not gonna give you guys a number of reps. Everybody's gonna ask how many reps. I'm not gonna give you a number of reps, and the reason is it's gonna be based on what you can tolerate. Start with half of what you can think you, what you think you can do, and slowly build from there. If you get achy and sore, back off. If you feel good, keep going. So I'll do it in a range, or a few ranges, where I feel like, hey, I can really tolerate that. Then, after a week, after a couple weeks, I back my feet up a little bit, doing the same range. Over time, I gradually progress that range. Then I can say, all right, I've done my isometrics. Now I can actually start doing eccentric loading. So I can actually lower down till my elbow touches, push with my other hand up, lower down. This is not very high load right here. As I march my feet back, it's more load. Months down the line, you can actually start doing eccentric catches. That's our wall activity. So I can do it with a baseball and catch with the baseball, decelerate, and then eventually I can do plyometric tricep activity. Initially, however, I'm going to start with isometrics, progress to the eccentrics, ranges I can tolerate, and it intensities that I can tolerate, as well as with rep ranges that I can tolerate. From here, we actually move to a band activity, and from there, we're progressing to some of our forearm strengthening, which is often overlooked and neglected when you're dealing with triceps issues. We've spent some time training the triceps muscle and the tendon to endure more load and squeeze some of the water out of that tendon. Now, you wanna think about, okay, what can we do in combination with our triceps loading to get this to feel and move a little bit better? heal up potentially. We know that the forearm musculature, particularly the flexors and pronator muscles, come into the inside of the elbow here. The flexor carpi ulnaris is a big muscle, makes up a large portion of my forearm muscle. It lies on this side of the arm. So if I hold, like I'm going to chop and do a hammer, it's this big muscle there that you can see. It works primarily in this way and this way. We're gonna train that with a baseball in a change-up grip. So I can do it with the pinky on the side or the pinky in. You see how the band is wrapped around. So I actually take the ball, roll it in the band, change-up grip or palm ball grip. The band stays directly on top of my fingers. I'm gonna come into a lunge stance to train the end range here, 
Because this tendon attaches to the ulna right there as well as the medial epicondyle, it actually has a close fascial connection and ties in very closely with the triceps tendon that comes on the inside of the elbow. So it's important to train it. Once I've done that, I can actually come out into a position more like pitching. The pinky is important when I train the FCU, the flexor carpi ulnaris, because of its attachment on the outside of the forearm here. So sideways, I'll show you what that looks like. If this thing so sideways, the exercise, good pitching position, slight flexion of the wrist, elbow up, and then I'm going to hit here. I can stand taller to hit different areas of the contraction. Now I'm going to actually go and bring the band to the inside of my hand. You can see how the band comes up around my fingers this way. If I face here, this is a tricep extension. This is a more advanced exercise once my arm feels a little bit better. Now we're moving into our more advanced tricep exercise that's going to incorporate forearm activation and eccentric and concentric contractions. This is after that tendon is no longer painful and achy in the morning, painful and achy after activity, and it can tolerate concentric and eccentric motion, lengthening and shortening during contraction. I don't have to go heavy. I go at a moderate weight so that I can control. The elbow stays up throughout the exercise. I go in a pitching position. The elbow's out in front of my chest, and I'm using a rope here, and the reason for that is this, because when I do a tricep press, I pronate the thumb down, just like I do when I pitch. So the thumb goes down, and I can go through my full range of motion. But I have to do the exercises in positions that replicate positions that I'm going to use in sport. Now, if there's somebody watching this and you aren't a baseball player, you're not a throwing athlete, the progression is largely similar. The positions that we put the athlete in from a lunge stance or up at this 90 degree angle aren't so important if you're not a throwing athlete. These are designed for our throwers, and the most important component is using the muscles in the way that they're going to be used in positions they're going to be used in the throw as much as possible as we progress. You then can move from here into the plyometric on the wall or into a plyometric throwing program. It's often important to know that we're dealing a lot of times with impingement or posterior impingement in the elbow at the same time that we're dealing with triceps tendinosis. And when that's the case for our throwing athletes, we want to do some decompression on the posterior aspect of the elbow as well. And I'm going to show you an easy way to do that on your own. The most effective ways are with a manual therapist, with a physical therapist who can do the techniques manually. Uh, that's not always an option. So when it's not an option, you're going to do the techniques on your own to decompress some of those posterior elbow tissues. On to our second level eccentric exercise. We're going to have a dumbbell positioned into full extension. This is five pounds. You may even start lighter than this. You're going to use this other hand as a stop. We're only going to go through the range that is pain free, doesn't result in achiness or soreness in the tendon, and doesn't result in residual soreness the next day. We know that tendinosis hallmark clinical symptom, achiness, soreness in the tendon area that goes on for a prolonged period of time and is generally worse in the morning and with the initiation of activity. So I'm going to start at the top here. I'm going to show you a full repetition, but you may only go through part of the range. This hand is a stop. I'm going to slowly eccentrically load. This is how we do it for our throwing athletes in a position that is closer to where they will do it in the throw. I slowly let the arm come down as far as I want and I use my left hand to push it back up. How many reps am I going to do? 
depends on how many I can tolerate, and I'm going to always stop thru sub-threshold before it begins to get sore. Now let's just say that I only tolerate stuff from 90 degrees to full extension. I use this hand here, stop and up. I vary my speed as I get better. I can also take it to a spot, bring it down, press it up, do the exercise like this. That's your eccentric lowering for the tricep. If you're dealing with true elbow impingement, there's a lot of ways that you can actually mobilize this elbow into more extension. We've shown them with a bat, we've shown them with a band, we've shown a lot of different variations that you can go out and utilize. They're on our YouTube channel. Search them up. However, a lot of times we just want to decompress the elbow. What we have here is a jump stretch band. You guys can see how thick that is. I'm going to take it up towards the crease of the elbow, known as the cubital fossa. From there, I grab my wrist, I keep my elbow slightly flexed, find a position of comfort for the elbow, and just lean away. The joint right now is decompressed. I'm going to allow the tension of the band to decompress the elbow, but I have to make sure that my right arm is fully relaxed during the exercise. And I just hang and I can bounce a little bit, let the band pull me back. If my tricep is activated, this won't be an effective technique. I want to make sure that my arm is fully relaxed and that's why I have a hold of it because if I just lean it will extend my elbow. I don't want the exercise to be an elbow extension based exercise but rather just a decompression of the joint surfaces. We're dealing with impingement in the back of the elbow. We have a hooked olecranon process that hooks in to a fossa like this. We're basically doing this in a very small amount to that joint surface. So once again, band as high up into the elbow crease as we can. The band is attached low and I can do a pulsation, oscillation, or I can just do prolonged hold. I should feel a slight stretch and decompression inside the elbow joint. I think that's a very important one, especially for our more mature athletes who have been dealing with elbow pain for a more prolonged period of time. There's rarely one thing that's going on. I made this video because I recently talked with an athlete who was dealing with some of these issues, and this is how we're going to begin to address some of the things that, that he's dealing with in combination with other approaches and other modalities that he's using, but these are some effective techniques that if done properly can be very effective and reduce pain very quickly and over time decrease the sensitivity of the tendon but also increase the health of the tendon as you begin to apply load and teach those fibers to lay more in parallel fashion again and squeeze some of the water out of that tendon. If you like this video hit the thumbs up make sure to subscribe we're posting videos twice a week you don't want to miss any we'll see you again here soon.